Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to everyone here. What an amazing turnout. Thank you for joining us. This is an amazing, iconic fight. October 28th, we ask a question. We want to know who the baddest man on the planet is. And to begin Riyadh season in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, two kings collide. And we are looking to answer that question. On behalf of Queensbury and Top Rank, we want to say what an honour and privilege it is to be working on such an incredible fight as part of the opening of the Riyadh season. And we want to express our thanks to His Excellency, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority, Turkey Al Al Shah. And to all of the teams at the GEA, Riyadh season, and Sela for this magnificent opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to welcome to the stage those who have come together to make this incredible event happen. Let's first welcome to the stage the longtime advisor of France. on October the 28th. Hailing from Morecambe, England, he is unbeaten, with a record of 33 wins and no defeats, one draw with 24 wins coming by way of knockout, presenting one of the greatest stars in the history of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time world champion and the reigning WBC and lineal heavyweight champion of the world. The Gypsy King, Tyson Fury! We fell in love as the leaves turn brown. And we could be together, baby. to see so many people have turned out to see me. Thank you very much. If you haven't heard, I've got an energy drink out called Tyson Fury. Try it if you want some balls. Thank you, Tyson. Uh, great entrance as ever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are joining us in the world. Uh, today we formally announce a huge, huge, iconic event, October the 28th, to kick off Riyadh season. A colossal event on October the 28th, the Battle of the Baddest. Two kings collide in the kingdom in what is quite simply the most anticipated combat sports event of the year. The king of heavyweight boxing, Tyson Fury, the WBC and lineal heavyweight champion, 
will take on the king of heavyweight MMA, the lineal heavyweight champion, and the man who never lost his world title in the cage, Francis Ngannou. This epic showdown between two giants in their field will mark the commencement of this year's iconic Riyadh season. The fight is brought to you by Queensbury Promotions, Top Rank, and Francis Ngannou's promotional banner, Gimmick Fight Promotions. And of course, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency, Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Turkey al Shah. Let's begin by discussing our wonderful hosts for this once-in-a-lifetime event on October 28th. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has become the go-to destination for some of the very best concerts, events, attractions, and more recently, some of the, the most finest boxing in the world. The iconic Riyadh season has taken place every winter since 2019, welcoming more than 37 million visitors from all across the globe. They've come to experience concerts, sporting events, dining experiences, and much more. Riyadh season is back for its fourth edition, and this year it will make history, with two heavyweight champions at the pinnacle of their sport facing off. It will be boxing that has the privilege of kicking off this year's Riyadh season. The special WBC event will determine who the baddest man on the planet is, and is of course called Battle of the Baddest, as Tyson says, come on, next to me. And of course, you can't determine who the baddest man on the planet is without a man who also once walked the earth as the baddest man on the planet. Former world heavyweight champion Mike Tyson has been training Francis Ngannou for this fight. Just adding another layer of intrigue and anticipation for this great event. So, we've got Francis Ngannou, we've got Tyson Fury, we've got Riyadh season. They all know how to draw a crowd and put on a show. And October the 28th, there will be a spectacle like you have never seen before. All right, well look, as you can see, we've got a very packed top table here. Everyone's been introduced. And I want to start with, uh, with Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. Let's get some, uh, let's get some words from you, Frank, on this. Like, like you've been involved in so many special events over the years. And I've heard you say in the build-up to this one, it's the biggest one you've been involved in. Tell me more. Well, first of all, I want to wish everybody a very warm welcome here. And I want to thank in particular His Excellency, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority, and all the staff and management team of the Riyadh season, the GEA, and Celebrate. This is a massive event. This is the biggest event I've ever been involved in. It's a crossover event, event of the sport. You've got a guy who's the best in his discipline, UFC, the heavyweight champion, a powerhouse. He's in the Guinness Book of Record, the hardest punching heavyweight out there. And you've got the man, the lineal champion, Tyson Fury, who's done everything you can ask for in a, in a fighter. Undefeated champion, brilliant boxer, brilliant fighter. Can, he can box, he can stand and trade with you. This is gonna be something special, a very, very special event. And this is opening the season. What an opening this is going to be for the season. After this, you get all these other fantastic events, but this is the event that's opening it. It's a blockbuster event. And it's very special for boxing to have that place kicking off Riyadh season this year, Frank. Well, look, as I just said, that you know, the two participants, they're, they're the biggest names in their respective sports. And Tyson's an absolute, he's not just a, a boxer or a sportsman. This guy just in Netflix series is the highest watched program ever on Netflix in this country. It's amazing, that's what he is. He is a massive, massive star. It's not just about boxing, it's about personality. And for me, Tyson Fury is the most entertaining, the most best fun as a heavyweight since Muhammad Ali. Unbelievable, he's just, he's just, wherever he goes, he brings excitement, he brings people. Last year we did two shows in the UK, jointly with, with Bob, and both those shows sold out. Broke the box office records with Wembley, we boxed, we sold out Spurs on December the 8th, freezing cold, not like the weather today, freezing cold, sold out. Why? Because of Tyson Fury. Why is he in Riyadh, why is he, why is he opening this Riyadh festival? Because it is him. He is Tyson Fury. He is the best 
in the world, the most well-known boxer in the world at the moment. There's no doubt about that. And this man here is going to come and try and take his head off, aren't you? Well, I don't know if you will, but you're going to come and try and take his head off. And so this is going to be... I, I see this fight really simple. simple. Tyson, everyone thinks Tyson's just a boxer, and Francis is a, is a big puncher. But Tyson, you've seen these last few fights, he goes in the trenches, and he get, if he goes down, he gets up. No one's like him. No one I've been involved in boxing is like him. Magnificent chip, and more importantly, a big heart. So don't think that somebody's going to be piddling around pit of paddle with you. You're going to be in a big fight, a big, big fight. Your fire's going to meet fire. That's what it's going to be. It's not a good time, so. I know it's not. And, we, it, is, is and we believe is, in is your a achievements. Nice story. We, and listen, for what you're doing is brilliant. To step up and step into a boxing ring, take my hat off to you. Everybody takes their hat off to you. You're a big man. We know, we know what you're capable of, but we know what he's capable of. Unbiased. But it's going to be, one thing's for sure, while it lasts, it's going to be exciting. This is going to be exciting. It's going to be one of the most exciting events you've ever seen. I promise you. Well, Frank, before I, uh, before I move on, the, uh, we've partnered with the WBC as well. We have a special commemorative belt for this, uh, for this event. They have. Um, Oh, there was a picture of it. Which should be coming up on the screen. There should be a picture. There you go. Look at that. Uh, the WBC. This isn't for the WBC title, but as you can look up here, they've commissioned a belt, which is the Riyadh Championship belt. And hopefully, this will be something that will be fought for every year. But this is a special, event, a special event. And as I say, it's two guys, the best of their disciplines. The best fighting the best. That's what this is. And that, the, the winner will walk away with that belt. And you will do well financially, no doubt about it. <laughs> thank you very much, Frank. Lovely belt up there. A uh, big thank you to the WBC. Let's hear from Team Nganu. Let's bring in Markel Martin. Uh, Markel, this is a fight that has actually been talked about for a little while. Uh, how special a moment is it for you and, and Team Nganu to land this fight with Tyson Fury? Uh, to be honest, it's, it's a dream come true. This is something that Francis and I have been speaking about for years. I think it was 2018, 2019. You guys can go back and look at the Tyson podcast. Um, and we spoke this into existence. Obviously, wouldn't have been here without the work of this man right here uh, throughout his entire life and journey. It wouldn't be here without his excellency uh, and wouldn't be here without you gentlemen. So we're honored, uh, we're thankful we're here to, to shake up and shock the world. Uh, go back and watch this man's story. If you doubt him now, you will be sorry come October 28th. This man will shock the world. He's done it time and time again, and it's destined to be Mark II. Well, Mark Hill, I've heard you say that if he touches Tyson Fury's chin, he is going to sleep. You, uh, you really believe in your man, don't you? Everyone who knows me, not many of you do, I will walk into the fire with this man, for this man, because I believe in this man. If I have all the respect in the world for Tyson and his abilities, but I know what this man can do. And there's not a puncher on the planet that can take his punch straight to the chin. That's just that. All right, well, thank you, Markel. Your mic will be live. Uh, I, I feel like you're, you're gonna have a few more things to say uh, in this press conference. Let's, uh, let's bring in Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Bob Arum. Look, you know it's a big, big fight when you need two Hall of Fame boxing promoters here promoting it. Bob, welcome. Great to have you, as always. Tell us from your side how it feels to be involved in yet another huge event, but particularly, you are starting Riyadh season this year with Fury against Nganu. Tell us, uh, tell us your thoughts. Well, this is a ma massive event around the world, but it's particularly massive in the United States because UFC has become one of the most popular sports in the United States, and Francis is a legend in that sport. And Tyson uh, has uh, performed so admirably in the United States uh, over the past few years uh, that he is a massive figure in sports. And now the fact that they're both coming together is something that is creating tremendous interest in the United States.
But more important, I think, is the fact that we are seeing history made. Riyadh is about to become the entertainment capital in the area and maybe one of the greatest entertainment capitals in the world. Uh, the uh, plans uh, for that uh, city, uh, for that area, are enormous, and it is really appropriate, and I want to thank uh, the uh, authorities in Saudi Arabia for making it happen, that this event is the kickoff event uh, for the Riyadh, uh, an em Riyadh emergence uh, into the world of sports and entertainment. It will be a momentous fight, but more important, it will be long after myself and all of you out there are gone, a historic event uh, for Riyadh, for combat sports, and it's an honor for top rank to be part of it. And finally, Bob, just, uh, just on the fight itself, I mean, you've got a very dangerous man over there sat right next to you, and you've got the world heavyweight champion right here. What sort of fight are you expecting on October 28th? A, a hell of a lot better than some of the writers have been predicting, because it's clear that Francis uh, has not had boxing experience, although he's training diligently. But the son of a gun, I've watched uh, these, these UFC tapes. I mean, I have never seen anybody hit with the power that Francis has. Tyson Fury, we know, he's been in with strong punches uh, before, like Wilder, uh, and he's got knocked down, he's picked himself up, and managed to come out ahead. I think this is going to be one of the most exciting events that any of us will have the opportunity to watch, and it will be shown here on TNT pay-per-view in the UK and in the United States on ESPN Plus on pay-per-view, plus all the cable systems and the satellite providers. It's truly a massive event, and uh, as I told Frank before, it's a privilege for both of us to be associated with the event. Thank you, Bob. Brilliant. Well, let's hear from the gladiators, the men involved, October 28th, to kick off Riyadh season, who will decide who the baddest man on the planet is. Let's start with Francis Ngannou. Uh, Francis, tell us a little bit about how, uh, how special it is to be involved in this event and, and also understand that boxing was always your dream. Tell us how you're feeling now sat at this table about to fight Tyson Fury. Um, I mean, I have a fight coming up, but uh, first of all, I'm very excited and I'm very happy, you know, um, from been having this this dream since I was a kid to become a boxer and today it's not just I'm going to box but I'm going to box the guy in the peak of the, uh, on the mountain you know um, so for me I mean usually I will not uh, pay attention of what's going around but this thing is so big that I can I can stop thinking about it it's more so like a for me, it's more so like history about to be made um, in, uh, in Riyadh on October 28th. You know, it's, um, I mean, it's something that I didn't see coming, even though my dream was always there, and uh, I hope that is gonna, I hope that is gonna happen someday, but I didn't see it lay out this way to be like one of the biggest events uh, in the world, because we, we are going to, it's not just a fight. We are going to be open up a um, uh, Riyadh season. So it's a cultural event that we are fighting on and we just make this fight bigger and bigger. And uh, nobody knows exactly what's gonna happen, but what I do know for sure is that I'm gonna be out there hunting 
hunting for that guy's head to take it off. So I can guarantee you that. All right, thank you, Francis. Let's bring, uh, let's bring in Tyson Fury at this point for, uh, for your opening thoughts, Tyson. Uh, fight number 35 for you, uh, an iconic fight, an iconic night. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us my thoughts. Come on. Now, where should we start here? It's been a uh, long old road in the old professional boxing game. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of back and front, a lot of other shit as well. Um, to get to this point is, shall we say, astonishing. I don't even know where to start with a speech. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm a best man or I feel like I'm a wedding speech or something. Um, we start, where do we start? Well, first of all, we start like this, okay? First of all, I want to say, you're one good-looking son of a bitch, don't you ever die. And then, I want to say massive, massive thank you to His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh for putting this fight on an event. I want to say massive shout-out to Dr. Rakan, massive uh, shout-out to Spencer Brown, and I want to say a massive shout-out to His Royal Highness MBS as well for making this possible. Um, Colossal, colossal event. You got me and Francis and Garnu here, you know, the UFC, former UFC. Everyone said he was an idiot for walking away from the UFC. And now all of a sudden he's a genius, isn't he? Guy's about to make $10 million. Come on! Egg in their face. Francis is gonna make that bag rich, okay? Riyadh season. Here's a little fun fact none of you know. I've actually fought at the Riyadh season before back in 2019. WWE crown jewel. I actually knocked out the monster among men, Braun Strowman. And I'll knock out another big dosser here in him in another one three or four years later. So, you know, it's a very special event for me. And it's a very special um, time in sports where a powerhouse like Saudi Arabia are coming in. They're, they're taking over the game, they're taking over football, boxing, whatever you want. I think within five years, ten years, they're going to be the powerhouse of all sports. All the big sports events will be in Saudi Arabia somewhere um, and for me obviously I've topped the bills in Vegas, London, all over the place you name it I've done it, there ain't shit that is out there that I haven't done already and now I get to do the world's biggest stage all eyes on me and I get to knock out him he's a good looking lad, I do like him probably got a big core as well, remember that Francis <laughs> however it's unlucky for him that he has to come if across you know me if you know where I come from you don't have to ask that question come on, come on Get it out! Get it out! <laughs> but yeah, I'm absolutely honoured um, to be fighting Francis. He's going to be a very, very good fighting man. You can see he's massive, he's in shape. Um, he's going to be a real challenge. And it's something different for me. I'm used to boxing boxers and boxing the head off somebody. But to fight like an MMA guy, he's coming in different style, he's lower, he's, it's different, it's a different look. I'm going to be like, you're going to be saying, I'm going to be saying to him in the fight like, beat the pussy up, call me Larry Holmes. <laughs> I'll be eating a job, bang, bang, bang. And you know, I can't wait, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic event. And I'm honoured that I'm a part of it, I'm honoured that Francis is. If you look at you, like this is the African king, Francis Ngannou, and the Gypsy king. People just look at these photographs, they don't realise the amount of work and effort that's gone into them. Let me just tell you, the lady who designed these costumes, she's won three Oscars. Three Oscars, the costume designer. The guy who took the photographs won three big awards as well. So this is not small time, this is as big as it gets. So I just wanted to share that little info with you. We can get back to the press conference now, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Tyson. A lot of key points there. Let's get a round of applause. I, I don't even know where to start, to be honest, but uh, we'll bring you... <laughs> Give me, give me a minute. Francis and Garnu, let, uh, let me ask you a question. We know how hard you hit. I've heard you talk about the delivery system. It's all well and good having a big punch, but you need to be able to land it. So is that delivery system ready? That we are working on the delivery system, and uh, if you look, um, if you've been watching uh, my training, you will see that we have one of the best guys in the world that ever lived, that ever done this uh, in the camp, in the man of Mike Tyson. I think uh, if you're talking about delivery system, you can go any uh, bigger than that, you know. So yes, we are working on the delivery system because uh, it's a very important uh, element for me in this fight. Um, I heard people said, oh, he has the biggest punch, he has a punch, he punched hard. 
but if you can punch somebody, your punch is uh, worthless. And uh, I really, I really intend to make my punch useful. You understand? So that's why I'm working on the delivery system. I mean, don't be a fool. I know this is a big challenge for me, uh, and I'm working very hard to give my to put myself in the best position because. Um, no many fighter, even great as they were, uh, didn't have this opportunity uh, in their lifetime, in their career, to be sitting in this position, have a fight in this magnitude, you know. And again, um, that's why. Like sometimes I wake up in the night, I'm like, "Hey man, I'm tripping. Like, is it real? Like, then I walk around, I look on stuff. I'm like, no, I'm not dreaming. This is this is real. So." And um, all that because of um, your excellency up there, which I want to thank as well uh, for putting this show um, bigger than a fight, um, a, a cultural event that we're going to be part of and make history out of it. And um, I, I'm going to fight the best boxer in the world for, the, for my best, first boxing fight. And I always like, and I always ask myself, like, what will happen at the moment that that guy hit the floor and doesn't stand up? Like, are you the, the best boxer in the world now? Like, what would that be? I mean, if you take out the number one, you're the number one, right? I think so. Yeah. But it's really hard to think about it. I think for right now, I'll just focus on like, take him out, then I'll figure the rest out after. <laughs> That's awesome. Before, uh, before I bring you in, this is really a question for, for both of you guys. Mike Tyson is involved in this fight. You have had Tyson training you to help you beat Tyson. Uh, how is that going, and uh, what sort of insight can Mike Tyson give you? Um, four years ago, exactly four years ago, I met Mike Tyson for the very first time. And uh, for many of you that know me, uh, know that Mike Tyson for me is the best that I've ever done this. Um, and in our conversation, one thing that I precisely request from Mike Tyson was when, whenever I fight Tyson Fury, uh, would he be in my corner? And at that time, everybody was looking at me as a fool to even thinking of fighting Tyson Fury. And today, it's happening. So from the moment that he get announced officially that I'm fighting uh, Tyson Fury in Riyadh on, on the opening on Riyadh season. I hit up Mike Tyson. I'm like, bro, those things, that thing become true. Like, this is it. And uh, it's something magical, right? I grew up just know Mike Tyson as a face of boxing. And uh, I get to the point that my first boxing match the guy in my corner, the guy that, I mean, I was in the gym with him training and was having those same, same sensation. Like, is this real, right? This Mike Tyson, right? And he was talking like, go, go, again, again, again. And I'm like, this is Mike Tyson on my corner for my first boxing match. This is real. And uh, even that, after training, after we done, I'll get ready to get home. And I'm like, man, one more. This is real. Just live the dream. It was amazing. So, the motivation, the, the wisdom, the, the knowledge that he brings, for me, is something unique. For me, it's something that, I mean, he's been there tens of times, uh, hundreds of times, which I haven't been there, so he knows a lot about the game, and if there's one, but one person that I have to trust, that I can trust as far as boxing is concerned, is Mike Tyson. All right, well, look, Tyson, I, I want to get your thoughts on that because you have literally been named after this man and now he'll be in the opposite corner trying to get this guy to knock you out. What a surreal thing to happen. So before, before Tyson, Tyson say anything, I want to mention, like, if it wasn't me, if it was Tyson fighting against somebody else, I think Mike Tyson would be on the side, but on his corner. But too bad for him, I was, Mike Tyson loved me more than him. <laughs> Too bad, Tyson. It's actually hurtful, isn't it? I'm about to cry in my eyes out here. I, I know that if it was personal and not business, 
then I'd take it seriously. But this is strictly business, you know. Mike Tyson's doing a job for Francis. He's, he's now a boxing trainer, fair play to him. It's, it's surreal for me to be, imagine a newborn baby being named after a boxing champion and then all of a sudden you're named after him, you become world heavyweight champion. And then the world heavyweight champion is now fighting somebody else and now the guy you're named after is training the guy. He thinks he's in a dream. Fucking hell, I'm definitely in a dream. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm named after the guy, now I'm in the opposite corner to him. 50 years later, 30 years later. It's, it's crazy, you know. But one thing I do have to say is I've got to take my hat off to, to Francis for his story and where he's come from and the fight, the grind, the determination and everything he's put into it to get to where he is. You know, he was just a, a, a young boy in Africa, you know, with a big dream. And everybody at home probably laughed at him that he was going to go to Las Vegas and win the UFC World Heavyweight Champion. And then when they said he's fighting Tyson Fury, they still laughed at him. But I never laugh at anybody because I know the man's struggle. I come, I come from a place where anything's possible and, and I've changed all my odds as well. My stars have been changed uh, because I couldn't, I may not have been here today um, and things would have went a little bit different. Um, so I never underestimate anybody and people are like, especially the fucking media, they're like, oh, Francis doesn't have a chance. So I say, if I go to the boozer, the old battle cruiser across the road, yeah, and I get in a brawl with a, with a guy, a drunken guy, He's going to hit me, and he might have a chance of knocking me out. So, how am I not going to prepare 100% for an absolute killing machine over there? Um, he's trying to take my brains out. I will give Francis the respect that he deserves, as one, as a warrior, and two, as a man, and three, as a world champion, what he is. Um, he's a big man, very strong, very powerful. And it's, um, it's in my interest to give it the 100% training in camp, and bring in the best sparring possible for me. Uh, I've got my nutritionist here, George Lockhart. We'll do a 12-week camp with George. Been in camp already for, this is my fifth week in camp. Um, let's not forget, I only trained six weeks for Deontay Wilder. I'm doing 12 weeks for Francis Ngannou. 12 weeks. So I need to be on my A game because it's more on the line now than a boxing fight. You know, if I lose to a number one contender or another champion, it's like, well, he lost to a champion, whatever. But if I lose to an MMA guy, I'm never going to be able to show my face in public again. It's going to be ridiculed, people are going to chuck it at me forever. So there's more riding on this than there ever has been before. And whether the media want to take it as a joke or whatever they want to take it as, make no mistake, Tyson Fury will leave zero stones unturned and I will come in at me fittest and strongest and best I've ever been to defeat this man. And if I'm not, and I get knocked out, I want you all to laugh at me. That's what I want, because I'll deserve it. Only an idiot wouldn't train the bollocks off of somebody like Francis. The man's a machine and I'll, I'll give him 100% respect and I'm in the gym every day training and I can't do no more. And it's all God's will now, all God's will. This is meant to be. It's been written in the stars 100 years before we're even born. This is our time, our moment in the sun. This is us. And he thinks it's in a dream as well. Uh, how do you think I feel? I'm in a dream too. I jog down the road sometimes and I think, am I gonna wake up in a minute? Has this all been a dream? And then it's a reality. So, as much as Francis is so excited to be here, so am I. I'm very, very excited, very, very blessed to be in this position. And I'm not in this position because, oh, I'm a good boxer or I work harder than the next man. I'm in this position because God willed it. That's it. Nothing else. Just uh, on Francis Ngannou's power. Now, Tyson, you are no stranger to taking on big, big punches. But they measured his punch, and he hits as hard as a small family car. Are you concerned about Francis and Ngannou's power? I've uh, I seen the, um, the video of him hitting the, the pad thing. Listen, the guy's a big punch. You can see he's, he's very big and strong and very well built. But, you know, I fought big punches before, like Deontay Wilder, and I even fought the old uh, Dr. Steelhammer, v uh, Vladimir Klitschko. And the one thing that both of them had in common were they both were massive punchers, but they both couldn't land it when it counted. And it's okay being a big, strong puncher in a target that don't move, but it's pretty difficult hitting this hand full power when it's moving like that. So you can't hit what you can't see. And, you know, I'm not the best at what I do because I'm easy to hit. I'm the best at what I do because I'm the most elusive world champion in history. And that's facts. ESPN will back that up. So, yeah, if he can land it on me, He's definitely got good aim and he's been training, so you know, 
It's, uh, I don't think he can. I don't think anyone can land it on me. That's a fact, and if they do, I'll just get back up. Because I get knocked down, but I get up again. You never gonna keep me down. And that's what it is, so yeah. Can't wait. All right, Francis, let me... Uh... You're gonna find out on October 28 how, how good you move. You, you, you know how good I move. I'm like the Matrix in there, baby. Yeah, and you know I'm gonna fight. I know you can fight, and I know you can punch hard, too. So, I know it. I'm not underestimating. I'm expecting a tough fight. If it's anything less than a 12, a 10 round war, 12 rounds, however many rounds it is, I'll be disappointed. I'm expecting a war. And if it's not a war, I'm gonna be disappointed. You, you, you get it. People, you get, you, people, you get people, your war. We're both from being the paid a lot of money From the moment that you signed for, yeah. for this fight, So we're gonna entertain. So this no is doubt entertainment. About it. I'm coming for, for everything. Good, and, and so you should. And if you beat me, you become the lineal world heavyweight champion. It goes back to the days of John L. Sullivan, the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man, going back to the, the olden days. You will be the Uno, number one in the division. So yeah, fantastic um, opportunity and, and fair play to you if you can do it. I'll, I'll walk across the ring, shake your hand, give you a kiss and take you out for a beer. Alcohol free, of course. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's bring in Bob Arum. It's, it's sizzling up nicely, Bob. You know, a lot of you uh, writers out there say uh, Francis comes from a different discipline and therefore going in with a top, top boxer like Tyson Fury, he has no chance. Now, what I suggest is go look at the tapes of Francis's UFC fights and see if you're convinced that he has no chance. Because I have never seen anybody with the power, whether it's boxing or MMA, that he has, Francis has. Now, Tyson is quite correct. Boxing is different. And boxing, it's not necessarily who hits the hardest, but how you can land your punches. So this will be not only a massive event in a great country, in a great place that's emerging as the an enter entertainment capital, but a significantly interesting fight that people will be talking about for years and decades to come. Thank you, Bob. Fr Francis, I just want to touch on, on, on one thing, the weight of this fight. Now, when you're in the MMA world, you have to cut weight to make 265 pounds. You can weigh whatever you want in this fight against Tyson Fury. You're, you're a big, big guy. How big are you expecting to be in there? And will you actually be uh, bigger than Tyson Fury? What do you think? I want to be in shape. I want to feel good, you know, and that's why, like, uh... I have, a, uh, I have a whole team around me to work on that. I have a great uh, strength conditioner, uh, conditioning uh, coach. Um, I have a nutritionist, a chef that work in order to make that. So, uh, and I've been fighting in the high level for so long now. Uh, I know it's good for me where it's the uh, middle ground for me with good weight uh, and most energy, right? So I don't want to compromise my energy in order to lose weight and I don't want to compromise my, uh, in a, my weight by uh, getting more energy so it's going to be in the middle and that I think we have that figured out. How do you win this fight Francis Ngoni? Excuse me? How do you win this fight? How do I win this fight? Um, usually I would say knockout because that's what comes first but I mean I know the guy in front of me I have watched how Tyson fight uh, live personally uh, so many times I have watched a lot of tape about him and it's very sleeky you, you know so uh, and that's why I put a lot of focus on my delivery system that we were talking about earlier because he's the guy that is very very hard to hit um, so I'm working about uh, about that and I'm aware that he might not get that punch, maybe not in full with full power, but I'm, I'm making sure that however it goes, the victory will be mine. In Riyadh on October 28th, 
the victory will be mine. And whether it's knockout or decision, that doesn't matter. The V is what matters. Well, let me ask you this. You mentioned that uh, if it lands, as I've said, you've got the hardest punch in the world. If it does land completely clean on Tyson Fury, what would happen? If it does land, good night. <laughs> Lies off. I mean, what do you think will happen? Oh, well, I'm going to ask Tyson. I'm not going to say. I mean, not to mention that this is a heavyweight fight, and that's what is very excited about heavyweight. Uh, we know that everybody in the heavyweight division can knock everybody out. You don't need to have a tremendous power. I'm not walking there just like, oh, Tyson Fury can knock me out. No, bro. I'm not going there to put my shit. I'm going there to fight, hit and not get hit. I think that's the rules of boxing. And that's why uh, I'm very aware of that. And that's why I'm taking this very serious uh, in all the components of the discipline. Well, Tyson, you've just heard it. If he lands that punch, that punch that's been recorded, that hits like a small family car, he says it's good night. Thoughts? I can't have a comment until I felt his power. Remember when I got the old Alabama slammer up on stage and said, hit me in the face, go on. I wanted to feel his power. I haven't felt um, Francis's power, so I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like. Is it going to be like so much different to any other heavyweight I've ever fought? Probably not. Will it bounce off me? Probably so, because I'm bulletproof. It's, uh, it's one of them things, it's like so many people have tried knocking me out before or beating me and I've been successful for 15 years in a row, 34 contests and two time undefeated champion so you know, I've heard it all before, all of the bullshit that fighters like to say I'm going to do this to do that. I said good luck to him in his training camp, um, good luck to him and his trainers and Mike Tyson and his other trainer over there who met him in Vegas a few times um, and that's it, bring your A game, let's have a fight, let's have a fucking fight, that's what we're being paid to do. All this talking, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna fight, we're gonna put on a show. He's a world champion in fighting, okay? Not a world champion in tennis, He's not a world champion in basketball, he's a fighting world champion. And I'm a fighting world champion, so the best man will win. There is no two ways about it. Whoever's the best on the night will win the fight. That's it. So world, world champion in boxing, in boxing. Because in fighting, I think you are very limited in general. Just no, besides not boxing. fighting, because I think I can beat fighting you in, in a cage. General, you're very limited. I would kick your ass in a cage, no, no problem. No, you can't dare. You can't even think about that. 100%. But just focus on... Uh, I'll personally, I'll beat you in a boxing ring, just and focus I'll kick on your ass in a cage. And then we will see after. 100%. I'll beat you at boxing, I'll beat you in a cage. No problem. No problem. No problem. Focus, focus, focus no, on boxing. No, no problem. For right now. Best at boxing, and I'll beat him in a cage fight. No two ways about it. Well, there you have it. The gauntlet has been laid down here. I've been told to wrap up. What, what a brilliant press conference we've had. We're just about to have the face-off. The thing to remember, this is October 28th. We kick off Riyadh season. Two kings collide in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And we're asking the world a question. Who is the baddest man on the planet? Me. I am. Oh. <laughs> Tyson thinks it's him. I'd imagine Francis and Garnu thinks it's I don't him. think it's me. I know it's fucking me. <laughs> find, out, f find out officially uh, on October 28th. If you can't be there, make sure you're tuning in. Thank also, you so much. Also, I just want to say if anybody was offended by my swearing, get the fuck out that door! <laughs> All right, let's get a face off down the front here, please. We're. Uh, We'll get off the stage first and then we'll come back on for a face-off.